What's going on with everybody, man? It's your boy, Eric, a.k.a. Young God, coming to you live in the Pink Dungeon, giving it to you real raw rugged, and I just want to get straight to this review. I've had a lot of people ask for me to review this because they didn't agree with Earl being my number one of the album decade, and everybody was just like, Nick, you heard this East beat he rapped over? Man, that shit trash, man. So I was like, all right, man, let me just get right into it. So without any further ado, this is Earl Sweatshirt, Feet of Clay, and I wrote this, by the way, on the Easy Mac box, you know what I'm saying, a, a, a young legend from the north side of Jacksonville once told me, all the raw shit come in the box, hamburger helper, ramen noodles, pop tarts, hey man, all that raw shit in the box, I honestly do not know what that means, but ever since he said that, I felt motivated, and then he followed that by saying, hey man, I was on that nickel, I was shooting dice, and I just yelled out, eat food, nigga. Hey, man, he said, if you ain't chewing, what you do? <laughs> I don't know what this has to do with anything. I just want to say, I, I still don't know what that means, but a nigga told me that, and I just felt inspired, man. He said, if you ain't chewing, what you doing? Eat food, all the raw shit come in the box. So I just want to start this off like this. I feel like there's some raw shit right here, so I had to write it on this goddamn Easy Mac box right here, man. But let me not hold you any further, man. First track off of Feet of Clay is 74. And, um, yeah, this is just interesting, man. This nigga is different. I like when people do different things in rap. I feel like I'm a rap nerd. I feel like I study rap. I really enjoy everything around it, like rhyme patterns and all everything like that. And he is, like every rap nerd's dream like this nigga is so different bro the bar's crazy man your shit isn't knocking like the feds fire we selling kids culture death circle like carrying phone got you living vicarious man bro this nigga is different bro that's fire we selling kids culture of we selling kids culture with death that's hard man that's hard man we are we are like the stuff that we selling kids man in this quote-unquote culture bro it's a lot of very negative things and these negative things can lead to death man you know what i'm saying carrying is basically you know uh like, what is it like a dead animal's corpse if i'm not mistaken the phone got you living vicarious oh my bro you know how many females i done met oh my gosh i want to do this is goals like bitch, this ain't realistic <laughs> Nigga, this is fake. You know, they be living through YouTube couple goals. Like, hey, man. Niggas be doing wild stuff. Probably behind the scenes. Niggas be goddamn beating a bitch like goddamn Ike Turner, man. Like, come on, man. Come on, man. Like, it's crazy, bro. Like, all these girls, they be living vicariously through other people on Instagram. Like, oh, my God. You see what he bought her? Like, hey, man. I'm pretty sure he punched her last night, bro. <laughs> that nigga look like he is not up to any good, man. Like, why are you living vicariously through this nigga with this 12-inch beard, man? Like, come on, man. No nigga with a 12-inch beard that looks like that shall be trusted. So, yeah. I felt that bar fire song um and then we go to east now this is probably the most like infamous song already off of the album just because of the beat i've seen memes about it made by people who i know for a fact does not listen to earl so this has definitely been making his rounds and um this beat i'm not gonna lie sounds like some five fingers of death type shit it sound like sway would have played this and before he played it he would have said hyenas this <laughs> is what it sounds like right here man it sounds like some wild five fingers of death you shouldn't be able to rap on this and um i was reading like some of the background of his album and he was basically saying it's supposed to be like an album where you like in a pits of death like it's supposed to be like a very dark album and he said on this i think it was his song he said i lost my innocence in the east so this do sound like something that would have been made like um I, I guess like in the Middle East, you know what I'm saying? Like this sound like some like 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 Osama getting. I can see like Osama getting turned to like that. Like like when the U.S. think they like goddamn catch Osama, and they really didn't. I can see that nigga like like goddamn getting goddamn getting uh, shifty in the tunnel. I can see that, you know what I'm saying? But hey, man, I don't know about this beat. I just gonna say that I don't know, man. But what I do know is that Earl is the most craftiest rapper alive. The fact that he could find a pocket on this beat is insane bro and still drop bars it's crazy bro no james harden d weak niggas garden uh, what do you say no james harden d weak niggas garden will peak fire i lost my innocence in the east like i said it sounded like a beat i could have been made in the middle east and he just flowing over this and it's like bro how are you rapping over this beat and it doesn't sound terrible so i don't get it bro like this nigga is one of the more craftiest rappers alive you can say what you want this nigga's different, bro. I'm telling you, Earl is really a very, like, I can tell he's a student of the game, man. I appreciate that. 
Chat number three, MTOMB. One of my favorites for sure. Alchemist produced this. And Alchemist just always shows me why he's a top five producer to ever live. I don't care what anybody says. Alchemist is top five, bro. Probably top three of you, if you want to be real. But he never get brought up in that conversation. That's a conversation for another day. But that's a fact, man. Alchemist is amazing. This is beat. Man, that's soulful. And he just going over this, bro. Like, the way he's catching his flow... It's crazy, bro. I got to pull out my phone, man. It was this one part in the song. It was like the very end. And it's just the way he like strung it all together. It's like, bro, you're really different, man. It was the part where he was like, um, mommy water, shoddy blew the fish out, Piscean, just like my father, still got bones to pick out. For now, just let's salt the rim and pour a drink out. Like the way he the way he strung that together, it's a lot of words in them sentences, but he strung it together, didn't make it sound awkward. And it's crazy, bro. Like Piscean, just like my father, still got bones to pick out. Like the way he I love when niggas do elongated uh, rhyme schemes. Like it's not just like I hit the store, where is your whore? Oh now I'm Board. Put up the fours. You know, I love when niggas do a little elongated rhyme schemes. And he did it right here, man. That was fire, bro. That last little part of that song. Man, Mighty Water, Shawty Blue, the fish out, Piscean, just like my father, still got bones to pick out. For now, let's salt the ribs and pour a drink out. Sip. Bro, he is. Bro, I'm telling you, bro. Earl might be the best rapper alive right now. Earl might be the best rapper alive right now. Because this beat also really fire. It's not a very easy beat to rap over, bro. This is not an easy beat to rap over at all. But Earl came through and did his thing, man. He's a different type of nigga, bro. And it's crazy because every time I hear one of these new Earl albums, it takes me a while to get adjusted to because he's going so left field more and more every album. Like, I told you, some rap songs, I wasn't a big fan at first. Now, I love that album. This, I was like, I yes, when I first heard it. But now, I'm like, yo, this is genius. So, shout out to Earl, man. Uh, then we go to OD. Very ominous beat. And like I said, the pocket he was catching right there. Uh, when he, was, he, was, he was like, Aki beeped the horn, told me. Just that whole little rhyme scheme he was doing right there. It's crazy, bro. I don't know how he's catching these rhyme schemes, man. OD is fire, though. Uh, El Toro Combo Mill feature Mavi. I've been a big Mavi fan, bro. I've been listening to Mavi last album. Mavi got one of my favorite bars of the year. He said, uh, he said the, the ops like New England's got videos of the plays. I'm a New England fan, but that was fire, bro. Like, he is so good at rapping. And he stole the show, bro. He was like, I'm finna make my mark known right here. And he rapped for about the goddamn 50 bars, bro. And Earl only had like a quick 16. This nigga just was rapping, but Mavi was in his bag, bro. I I'm gonna have to interview that nigga, bro. He's a crazy nigga, bro. Mavi's fire. And then Earl came through with a very, like, it was the way he recorded that. Like, I want to be around Earl when he records music because I feel like you have to be in a different type of headspace to record record the way he does and it's crazy like i said the the, the mic was a little muffled it was weird like, i want to know why these choices are made how he thinks of these bars like he's just an interesting nigga man earl is fire but yeah this is a fire song right here tis tis slash cookies um i don't know what's going on here it's like it's like it starts off like it's one song with the tis tis thing it's not too much going on then the cookies thing it's like a really insane beat and it's just Bro, I don't know. I feel like I would have, for me to do this album justice, I really should write an essay. Not an essay, but do like an essay type of video on it. You know how people like to do essay style videos? I feel like that'd be more appropriate for this album because it's so much that I'm not talking about within these lyrics, within these rhyme schemes he's doing. It's crazy. It's only so much I can talk about and remember from this album, you know, within the time span I, I've uh, sat with it. But man, it's, it's so good, bro. So yeah, Tis Tis Cookie is definitely a very interesting, different song. And then he, um, Ends it off with 4 m feature Mac Homie. Bro, Mac Homie, first of all, this nigga sounds like most deaf when he's singing. I'm not gonna lie. That's exactly what he when, when, when he hit the, the invoice thing, like he legitimately sounds just like most deaf. I'm like, nigga, because first of all, I'm looking at the track list, like, nigga, is most deaf on here? Because he sounds just like him when he's doing that singing. And I'm like, yo, this is fire. So I low key wish like Mac Homie will put out this first half of the song of just him singing because i love it most deaf sing and he sound just like most deaf on here man fire fire song man i'm real i'm still not for sure what for it stands for but i do know send me the invoice send me the invoice i ain't got to oh let's see 
If you send me the invoice, it be the invoice. It's so smooth and so common. And yo, it's very, very fire singing he delivered right there. Then he had an arrested development bar. What he said, leg hanging out the window. Um, arrested development, Mr. Window. Fire. My mama used to love that song. She probably still do love that song. But yeah, she used to always play me that song. So when he said that, I was like, oh, that's, that's a Mr. Window bar. So that's a fire classic arrested development song. So he came through with a fire verse. Um, he's very slept on. If you don't know who Mac Hami is, man, I was sleeping on that nigga too because I heard him very early on. I just wasn't a fan. Just like it is Earl stuff because it's kind of left field. But man, I've came to appreciate him, bro. This nigga's hard, man. Um, then the Earl come in, bro. Just ridiculous. Uh, like Chivalry did. Oh, he said kicking cans like Chivalry did. You really did. Like, come on, man. <laughs> That's hard, man. He kicked the can, mean he dead. Chivalry's dead. Now nah, you're really dead. Like, bro, he's just such a different type of writer. And he doesn't do the, like, rhyme schemes you would expect. One of my favorite things about Earl is that he will, like, connect something, but not directly connect it. It'll be directly connected, but he won't directly connect the two in the bar. Very, very perfect example is his verse on Really Though. The way he will, like, the last word of the bar would connect to the next a set of bars he's rapping about but it's not directly related or whatever so i always think that's like a really cool thing that he does and yeah man this is a really interesting album man i just had to talk about it for a little bit so how do y'all feel about it till next time i say what i mean i mean what i say haters gonna hate and that uh, players gonna play y'all holla at your button man